you've talked about um, necessity of physical practice and a rather obvious one, um, but one that is a kind of poses a widespread difficulty in our society because we're such a highly mediated society and we have amazing things like electric lights and so forth which artificially alters our relationship with to sunlight and darkness mm -hmm. um, is sleep and uh, you know if I know that if I'm not getting enough sleep um, right. then <laughs> there's no pure consciousness uh, right, right. so uh, I was wondering if we could maybe talk a little bit about different practices besides yeah. the you know the obvious one which is you know get as much sleep as you need no more, no less. What are some techniques that you uh, have found to be useful? Yeah, well, one thing that, that many people find useful is to establish a routine, you know, a pre-sleeping routine, so that you establish cues uh, that the body recognizes. You know, and I, I always do every night. I do a little posture flow, and I do a little pranayama, a little breathing practice. And it takes maybe 10 minutes or so. But the brain knows, okay, we're going to sleep now. It's done this enough time to, okay, this is where we're headed down to sleep and we can do this thing. So that's been very important to the training the brain into sleeping time now. Um, a lot depends upon, for me, what I eat and when I eat it too. If I eat you know, protein very, very late, that's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. Carbs late, protein midday or something. Uh, and I try not to eat very late. I mean, if I'm eating at 10 o'clock at night, it's going to be a, not a good night. Mm -hmm. Alcohol also is a perturber for me. Yeah. I, don't, I don't drink very much, but when I do, uh, it doesn't take very much to upset sleeping. So I try to do as little alcohol as possible and carbohydrates late and not protein. And try to get some exercise. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you get some exercise late in the day, my experience, you know, 5, 6, 7, 8 o'clock, just something mm -hmm. to burn out the day and get yourself worked out a little bit makes sleeping much easier. I even find that my routine from about, it was, I tend to go to sleep about you know 10, 30 or 11, sometimes a little later, but my routine actually seems to stem from about 8 o'clock onward mm -hmm. is the cues that the brain is being set up mm -hmm. uh, to go to sleep. So it can actually extend uh, backwards in time further mm -hmm. than I expected because as you were talking I became aware of that. So that's mm -hmm. right. The reason I had trouble sleeping then is because I was doing something unusual exactly. between 8 and 10. Right. Right. Um, now, you know, it feels like that's good guidance and sometimes we do these things intuitively, but I think it's good to be aware also that we can set up a practice mm -hmm. whereby we're more likely to get right. good sleep. But then there is the kind of uh, uh, next level where, okay, you're on a plane or you find yourself away, you know, unable for some reason to actually fall asleep at night. Uh, I have found, you know, ad hoc meditative techniques to be very helpful mm -hmm. uh, for that. Mm -hmm. um, that first and foremost, you know, what I used to do all the time is that if I were laying asleep at night, that I would sit there and my default mode network would be going worrying about not sleeping. Okay. <laughs> And stories about not sleeping. <laughs> oh my God! And then this is going to happen. And then oh, you know, you know. Yeah. So um, I think it's you know again it's obvious, but it's worth remembering that these techniques of self inquiry, for example, I have found to be very useful mm -hmm. for any brief episodes of sleeplessness that I have experienced, where I can uh, turn my consciousness around and say, mm -hmm. you know, who's not sleeping? Mm -hmm. And then uh, sometimes I, when I'm turning my consciousness around and say, who's not sleeping, I say, am I loving God with all of my heart? Mm -hmm. Since that's one of my inquiry practices. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I do that, it can be a very beautiful, uh, uh, energetic, mm -hmm. um, meditative space where I'm really neither asleep nor awake. Mm -hmm. And I pass sort of imperceptibly mm -hmm. into sleep, but in the meantime, I have this very uh, energizing and, and beautiful mm -hmm. uh, experience of, of, of a kind of non-dual state. Mm -hmm. And so it's actually then, you know, upon reflection, becomes a kind of uh, opportunity mm -hmm. for practice. Mm -hmm. That um, 
as I mentioned to you before, you know, a couple nights ago, I woke up at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's the classic hour right, right. for meditation. Right. So maybe that's a clue from my practice. Hey, get up and meditate, right? Yeah, we talked before to you know the <clears throat> the brain after a while begins to take control of this process. I mean the brain once the eye gets small enough, the brain is really driving the bus. And if it doesn't get enough processing time, um, my experience is many people I've worked with, you'll find yourself awake in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. four o'clock in the morning or something, which is the there's actually a name for that. The mm -hmm. Hindus have four o'clock in the morning, four to six in the morning, because it's such a special, powerful time. And you find yourself awake. It's like, okay, the brain's saying, look, just go and sit someplace, be quiet, be still, don't do anything, we just need some time here. It's not about you, it's about we have work to do. Yeah. And so you'll be finding yourself sitting in the middle of the night, you know, just sitting there quietly, and just, you don't know what's going on. It's not head, just something is happening. Mm -hmm. The brain's working offline, repatterning, refunctionalizing. And so just be present for that. As you, you will run into that, almost everybody does, they get on down the path, that the brain wants more processing time. It loves this space. It wants to get into as much as it can. It wants to stay there if it possibly can. So it'll process. It'll it'll wake you up basically to get mm -hmm. there to do that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, and and what I found is when the brain does that, mm -hmm. when it yeah. wakes yeah. whoever this is yeah. up and says, "Hey," yeah. 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 that there's not really this deficit of sleep mm -hmm. because you know my resistance sometimes is saying, "Oh, well, if I get up now." then I'm going to be tired. But if I just get up exactly. and meditate, or meditate in bed, which might work contra the cues that we were talking about right. earlier, then inevitably, you know, there's about a half hour or so right. of meditation, and then the sleep comes, mm -hmm. and it's no issue. Right. It's as if I had never awakened during the night at all. That's right. um, whereas if you don't accept, and you sort of fight it and try to get back to sleep, yeah. then there can be issues. Well, and, and we know enough about sleep patterns. I had a blog post on sleep. We know enough about sleep patterns and know that you need to go 35, 40 minutes. But getting up, going down, doing a practice for 35 or 40 minutes, and then coming back to, back to bed often works really well. Mm. Laying in bed, my experience, hoping it's going to get better, doesn't usually work as well. Yeah. Get up, go downstairs, do whatever you're going to do it, and then come back to bed. I've found that sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> so, the, the, but, but when it works in bed, it, it really is yeah. quite uh, yeah. delicious. But um, it's uh, it's just a different mode of meditation, yeah. really. But I would also encourage people to, if you that happens to you, let you wake up, and you get this wild mind going on. Remember the old Zen quote about breath sweeps mind. Mm. I mean, if you can get your breath, just go back into your breath, let your breath, find some place where you can get long, slow, even if you lay in bed, long, slow, smooth breaths, focus on your exhales. It sounds like, you know, too simple, but it is exactly that powerful. Just keep going back into your breath, long, slow exhales, and you'll be surprised how much that will slow down, stop the narrative mind, and perhaps get you back to sleep again. <laughs> <laughs>